I wonder do you love reading books? Maybe you love to read books that are like detective stories. Maybe you love to read books about animals and about things that are in this world. Maybe you love to read joke books and books that are really funny. Or maybe you just love to get a comic and to read it. Well, I'm going to show you a book right now. This is the book here. And this book tells an amazing story. And the amazing story comes from the Bible. And you might say to yourself, but hold on. What is this amazing story? There are no words in this book. There are no pictures in this book. This book is the wordless book. But you listen really carefully because I'm going to tell you the amazing story that it tells. And it starts off on the very first page of this book. Can you tell me what color this page is? That's right, this page is gold. I wonder, can you think of some things that are gold? Yes, you might think of treasure. You might think of money. You might think of gold jewelry. When I think of those things, it reminds me of people that have a lot of money, people that are rich. But you know, the Bible tells us that there's someone who is the richest of all, someone who is richer than anyone on this earth. That is God. God is the richest of all. God is the richest of all because God owns everything. Can you imagine? God owns everything in this whole universe. He owns the mountains, the oceans, the fish that swim in the seas. God owns all of the animals. God made them all. The Bible tells us that God is the great creator. And because he made everything, he made you and he made me. And God owns everything. And that makes God the richest of all. There is no one like God. But you might think of some other things that are gold. Can you tell me what this is in the picture? That's right, it's a crown. Can you think of who would wear a crown? Yes, a king or a queen. And what do they do? They rule over a country or a group of people. They rule and they reign. You know, again, that reminds me of God because God rules and reigns over everything. God isn't just the richest of all. But God is the greatest ruler. He is the most powerful ruler. God is so amazing, isn't he? He really, really is. But the Bible also tells us as well that God loves this whole world. You know, it tells us in John chapter 3, verse 16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Those are the words of God and they're read from the Bible. God loves this world. God loves all of the people in the world and God loves you and God loves me. He loves you so, so much. But let's find out a little bit more about God. Where does God live? Well, the Bible tells us that God is everywhere. Why is God everywhere? Because God has no body. He is invisible. In fact, the Bible tells us in the book of John that God is a spirit. And the Bible tells us that his presence, his spirit, fills the heavens and the earth. God is everywhere. He is everywhere all of the time. He is a great big God, isn't he? But God has a very special place called heaven. The Bible tells us that in heaven, the streets are made of gold. It's a beautiful, beautiful place. In fact, it's so beautiful that there are no words to describe how beautiful heaven is. It's an amazing place. I wonder, do you know how you get gold? Do you know how gold is made? Well, I have a block of gold here just to show you what a block of gold looks like. But you know, gold isn't just dug up in blocks. Gold has to be found. And what they do is, is that they find where gold is and then they have to heat it up to a really high, high temperature because in that gold, there will be stones and rock, bits of dirt. And so the gold has to be heated up to a really high temperature so that it can be purified, so that all of the dirt and all of those things that shouldn't be there can be removed. And then you have pure gold. Gold is pure. That reminds me of God because God is pure. 
God is holy. Do you know what that means? Do you know what it means that God is holy? It means that God is separate from sin. And sin is all the wrong things that people do. In fact, God is sinless. He is perfect. He is holy. Everything God does is right. Everything God does is good. He has no sin. He never has sin and he never ever will. God is holy. But let's find out a little bit more about this place called heaven. There are some things that are not in heaven. And you might be able to see some of these things in the picture and you're maybe trying to work out what they are. Well, in heaven, there is no sun and there is no moon. Why do you think that is? Well, the Bible tells us in the book of Revelation that the glory of God shines in heaven. There is a great brightness in heaven and it's God's glory. And because of that, there is no need for the sun to be there. You don't need candles. You don't need torches. You don't need lamps. God's glory shines and heaven is a bright, bright place and there's no need for the sun. But because there is brightness all of the time, that means there's no nighttime in heaven. So you don't need the moon. There is no darkness in heaven at all. Can you see this boy and girl in the picture? Do they look happy? No, they're not happy. In fact, they look really, really sad, don't they? You know, the Bible says in the book of Revelation, which is the very last book in the Bible, that there is no sadness in heaven. There's no crying in heaven. It tells us that God will wipe away every tear. There is no sadness in heaven and there's no crying in heaven. Heaven is a happy place. It is happy all of the time. It is a joyful place. But there are some things that do make people cry here on earth. One of those things is sickness. I wonder, have you ever been really sick before? Maybe you've had the flu or maybe you've had chicken pox or maybe you've had to be in hospital and it's not nice being sick. It can make you feel really, really miserable, especially if you're in pain. But the Bible tells us again in the book of Revelation that there is no sickness and there is no pain in heaven. Isn't that amazing? That means there's no need for ambulances or hospitals. There is no sickness in heaven. And something else that makes people really sad here on earth is when someone dies. Maybe that's happened to you. Maybe someone that you love has passed away and you really miss them. But in heaven, there is no death. No one ever dies in heaven. There are no graveyards. There are no funerals. No one ever dies in heaven. Everyone lives forever and ever and ever. But there's something that's not in heaven. I wonder, can you spot it in the picture? That's right. It's that dark heart in the middle of our picture. That reminds me of sin. There is no sin in heaven. There is no sin in heaven because it is God's special place. It's a holy place. And God is holy and he can have no sin near him. Sin is anything we think, say or do that breaks God's law. Sin is the wrong things that you do, the wrong things that I do. And the Bible tells us that everyone has sinned. Everyone has done things that are wrong against God. Those are things like telling lies, stealing, losing your temper, being jealous, gossiping, those things are wrong and they're called sin and everyone sins against God. But there is no sin in heaven. That means that you can't get into heaven with the sin in your life. But there are some other things that are in heaven. As we have already heard, in heaven the streets are made of gold. But in heaven as well there are angels. Do you know what an angel is? An angel is a special created being and they are created by God to serve him and to worship him. In the Bible, we read of how angels brought messages to people and how they protected people. 
In heaven, there are thousands and thousands of angels. There are so many angels and they are there praising God and worshipping him. They are in heaven serving God. Can you imagine what it would be like to see thousands and thousands of angels? But also in heaven, there is the Lord Jesus. Do you know who Jesus is? That's right, Jesus is God's son. And Jesus lived on this earth for 33 years. Before he came to earth as a man, he lived in heaven. And then he came to earth as a tiny baby and he grew up to be a man. And yes, he was a man here on earth, but he is also God. In this picture, we have a picture of what Jesus might look like, but we don't actually know. The Bible doesn't tell us what Jesus will look like, but we know that he's in heaven. But in this picture, can you see his hands? Can you see what are on his hands? There are wounds. Those wounds remind me of what Jesus did. The Bible tells us that Jesus was nailed to a cross. And when he was on that cross, he was being punished for your sin and for my sin and for the sins of everyone in the whole world. You see, because God is holy, God must punish sin. But because God loves this world and he loves you and me so much, God punished his own son, Jesus, instead. Jesus took our punishment when he was on the cross. Jesus knew that we could not go to heaven with our sin. And so he took our place. And three days later, Jesus rose again from the dead and he is alive today. Jesus is the saviour of the world and he is the only one who can take away your sin because he was punished for your sin. In that verse that we read in John 3 verse 16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him would not perish, but would have eternal life. If you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, then that means you won't perish, you won't die, but you will have eternal life. You will be able to live with God forever and ever and ever in heaven someday. And it's because of what Jesus did for you. But you must believe in him. If you're sorry for all the wrong things that you have done, you can simply just believe. Ask him to forgive you for your sins and believe that he's able to do it. To believe just means to simply trust in him 100%. If you simply believe in him, then you too can have eternal life. You too can live forever with God in heaven. Isn't that amazing? And you can do that right now, just where you sit. You can simply believe in him. In John chapter 14, Jesus said that he was going to prepare a place for them. Jesus is preparing a place for those people who believe in him. But in this picture, we have something else. We have a book. And you might think, oh, I bet you that's a Bible. But that's not actually a Bible. It's not a prayer book. But in heaven, there is a book and it's called the Lamb's Book of Life. Jesus is the Lamb of God. And in this book, there are lots and lots of names, lots of names written down. Those names belong to the people who believe in Jesus, who are trusting in him as their saviour. I wonder, will your name be written in the Lamb's Book of Life? If your name is written in that book, then that means that someday you will live with Jesus forever in heaven. After Jesus died and before he went back up into heaven, he gave a very special message to his disciples. He told his disciples that they were to go out into the world, the whole world, and to tell everyone the good news, the good news about Jesus. The good news that Jesus died and had rose again from the dead and that Jesus could forgive them for their sins if they believed in him. As Jesus stood there on the Mount of Olives, as he told his disciples this very important message, Jesus began to ascend into heaven. That means that he began to go up, up, up into the sky. And the disciples, they were looking up into the sky. And then Jesus disappeared. He was gone. He went back to heaven. And that's where Jesus is right now. But as the disciples were looking up into the sky, suddenly two angels appeared. And these angels told them that Jesus would come back in the same way that they had seen him go. 
Jesus had went up into the sky through the clouds and into heaven. And someday Jesus will come back through the clouds to the sky and he will come and he will take those people who believe in him and he will take them to heaven with him to live with him there forever and ever and ever. We don't know when Jesus will come back. He could come back today. He could come back tomorrow. We don't know. But will you be ready when Jesus comes back? You too can believe in Jesus. You too can have your sins forgiven. Just as we read in John chapter 3 verse 16. Listen carefully as I read it one last time. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. You can believe in Jesus today and then you too will have eternal life and you will live with him forever and ever in heaven.